starting out to be a beautiful day in the southern mountains of Appalachia. We had cold, rainy weather over the weekend for Easter. All the dogwoods are in bloom, so I would say that was either dogwood winter or an Easter. It seems like every year at Easter there's a little cold snap, a uh, Easter cold snap or dogwood winter. All the dogwoods around here are in bloom. So it was kind of miserable, cold, and made you want to sit by the fire, and temperatures down in the 30s and lots of rain, cold rain. So it's kind of miserable, but it's all moved out. It was chilly this morning, but things are beginning to warm up. And so Corey and I have come outside to, our yard needs terribly to be mowed. So Corey's been working on that, trying to weed eat and mow. I hope that she can help me. We're gonna do a few other things she's gonna help me with. I need to get back to the irises, putting the irises on the, on the bed. Believe it or not, those that I just put up there last week on the one bed, they're already, stood up the ones that were big enough to stand up and look like they're doing great so i'm sure that rain really helped them it also helped a lot of other things it's amazing how much greener the world is this morning than it was say friday morning saturday morning it's just amazing our apple tree our most established apple tree is just fully leafed out now so just amazing what a little rain can do for for plants this time of the year and I know this warm weather that we're going to have this week, it's going to kind of be cool in the mornings, but every day I think it's forecasted to be up in uh, the 70s. It's really going to make everything pop. So it really will feel like spring of the year before the end of this week. It's time for Corey's favorite flower, one of her favorite flowers to be blooming. These are columbines. You can see the bees really, really enjoying it. But really a beautiful bloom. They kind of hang over, but you can see underneath. They're just lovely. And I have several different uh, colors, and they just kind of reseed themselves and come back every year. So here's some of the different colors. It's really kind of a, I don't know, what would you call that, a royal purple? Yeah. And then this one down here is more of a, more of a dusty kind of purple, but really pretty. And the bees, as you can see, are just adoring the blooms. These are some of the spring bulbs I have that are still blooming, really pretty. I don't even know the names of them. It's been so long since I planted them. These little purple ones, I think those might be like Canterbury bells, but I'm not positive. You probably know what they are, you can tell me. These right here, uh, really lovely, but on the day that Pap's funeral, he died in April, 2016. These were still blooming that year. And right when we were about to get into the car to go to the funeral, I told Matt, wait a minute, I've got to go, I'll be right back. And I come over here and pick some of these and I took them and put them in Pap's hand. I just thought that was, I mean, he didn't know, not likely, but I just thought if he could know that he would appreciate that. Bring in something, of course he had beautiful flowers all around him, but bring in something from home, from, you know, Tipper's garden, he would like that. One of the first things I'm gonna do, Corey went down the hill to borrow some weed eater gas from Steve. That's the wonderful thing about living near family. You can borrow from each other. Normally we have it on hand, uh, but Matt took it with him to work today because on his way home from work today, he's going to stop by Miss Cindy's and weed eat and mow her yard. So, and he didn't know, I didn't even know when I got up this morning that I was gonna say, hey, Corey, let's work in the yard all day. So that's why I don't have any on hand, but Corey got most of it done. So we just need a little bit more. And we do have an uh, electric weed eater that I use, one with the battery powered, and we used it till it run out. We need to get two batteries. So it's it's charging now so by the time Corey gets the gas and and that battery gets charged we should be able to finish finish the weed eating me and her together but one thing I want to do this bank here in front of the house it's a lot of houses in Appalachia are built like ours in that it, you have to cut down so far to build this foundation that often you're you're it's better off to go ahead and build a basement or you just have a gigantic crawl space you know it's just huge so lots of houses are built in my area of Appalachia are built on basements and ours are what ours is and what happens is this it kind of leaves a bank like this a lot of times because this driveway drives up to the basement and then there's the bank then there's the upper driveway so that's really common granny and pap's ha house has a bank just like that and over the years when me and matt first moved in here i tried lots of different things to plan on it and um it's just hard to get anything to grow on it and i'd made this decision 
with people telling me not to that I put ivy on it English ivy that's what's growing on it I remember dear sweet lady Jean Stalkup she let me borrow some English ivy actually come to her house and cut some for mine and Matt's wedding we used it to decorate in the in the church but after that she let me have some to start here and she said I wouldn't do that if I was you I wish I'd never started it at my house and I was like well I just I just really want to I really want to so I didn't listen to her and I started it. Now what happens with English ivy is you've probably seen it at places where it's growing in trees and up it'll take over your house and all that kind of stuff. That's not happened here. It's not took over the house. It's not got up to the house. And then also, because we drive on this part and that part, it can't kind of escape there. And anytime I pull any up, I'm really careful about just putting it right back where it's at right here. But over the winter, what happened is, so I just kind of accepted that that's what's, what's going to be there. It'd be so hard to get rid of it. And I still don't know that I can get rid of it without a lot of hard work. Uh, and you may be using chemicals, but I don't want to do that. Anyway, over the winter, what happened, I don't know if it was the bitter cold like we had at Christmas, unusually cold, but something has killed a lot of it. So I'm still not going to try to remove everything, but I thought while that it has killed a lot of it, especially in this part right behind where I'm standing, kind of right by the new steps, I'm going to try to plant some of my, I've got so many hostas, I'm just going to try to put some hostas here. And there are hostas growing up through the middle of it as you go down, kind of where I had them planted and then the ivy took over. So I'm going to work on that after Corey and I uh, try to finish the weed eating and finish the mowing. And then on the other side of the steps, I've still not planted, you know, I asked people to give me so many great suggestions. I've still not planted anything there. And one reason is uh, the rain and time, but I also need to add some, some soil there. I need to add some stuff. So that's one of the main reasons I haven't. I did buy at Satterfield's farm, I did buy some uh, creeping flocks. That was what a lot of people suggested uh, that I buy. And I had already kind of thought about that. I have some, I used to have a lot till the ivy took it over, but even down here right now, this is the time of year it blooms. I have some pink blooming down there. So I'm definitely gonna put that on that side and um, I'm not sure what else I'll put there. We decided just to fly into this little project and finish it. We had a problem with the um, lawnmower earlier that Katie fixed, and then it was Katie to the rescue again with the weed eater, so she fixed that for us. Good to have people around that can fix things. So while they were doing that, I started on this project, and then I told Corey, let's just finish it. So it don't look like much now. It's just, you can see, we put some different, some different colors of pastas. I don't know all the names, but there's like a green one. We put some of the variegated ones and then some of the kind of bluish has a bluish golden kind of tint to it so once those come out and actually live and flourish right here it will be pretty don't look like much now but that's the way it is with a lot of a lot of gardening and yard work sometimes you have to wait for the following year to actually see the see the beautiful sight that you was looking for <laughs> it's just yeah. from weed eating. That's the thing with weed eating. Once you, you get it to the face and everywhere, and I can feel it on my glasses. But oh, yeah. Corey's wiping it off my face. You got some on yours too. But at least we got that chore done. It looks a lot better. Yeah, it's amazing. I didn't realize it was looking so scrubby. Our yard is never going to win a, a best lawn. It wouldn't even enter. Wouldn't beautiful. even get to the contest. Bless you. But it does, it is amazing how much cutting things back, the grass, and this is the first time we've mowed or weed eated this year, so it's amazing how much neater it looks, uh, even with all the bare places in our in our yard. It looks great though. Y'all's yard is so pretty because it's just so unique and it has its each little corner oh, and little spot you. for its own thing. I love well, it. Thank you. So what we really should do is start on those beds, at least start putting the irises into the banks like I did this first one. We've got so many more to do and we're going to do that. But first I'm going to make Corey help me right here in front of the greenhouse on each side of the door. 
last year I had just some pots of calendula. I just set them there and it just turned out to be so nice uh, just to enjoy. So when I was looking at it one day this week or last week, I guess it was, I thought, well, what I should really do is actually make two little flower beds kind of right there. We're just gonna, we're not gonna enclose them or anything like that. We're just gonna um, maybe pour some dirt, put Carve some mulch and then plant some things there. So I think we're, I'm gonna get Corey to help me do that. Even though the other is more important, it's hard not to want to do something that's gonna be beautiful. Beautification. Right, so we're gonna do that first. I'm feeling sneezy. It's all the grass that went up your nose. <laughs> Probably. I need to do my sinus rinse tonight if I think of it. Yeah. Rinse out these nose holes. Yeah. All right, how are we doing this? Well, first we need to clean up our mess. You mean this mess yeah. right here? We had a, uh, because of all the mud we've had, I've thrown cord cardboard down, then I threw some used papers down just so it'd be easier to walk on it, but now that's turned into just a, a really mess, mess, mess. So we may pick up the ones that's not embedded in the ground and then get started on the beds. So Corey and I got this little job done. It looks so good. The only thing we actually have growing though that we put out here is the azalea that the kind folks at Satterfields give me, Pat gave me, and then our horseradish. Oh, and we did plant some little strawberries that I had left over in one of those big grow bags there on the far side. But I didn't plant anything in the rest of them. I have flowers that could go in them. But tonight, this morning we had scattered frost. In the morning it's supposed to be a heavier frost. So I'm just not gonna put anything in them. Uh, today but we at least and the horseradish has already been out here so I think it'll be just fine and I think the azalea will be fine there protected but um, the other stuff's more tender but anyway it's great that we actually got the kind of got the layer of mulch we put some cardboard down to keep the weeds at bay some mulch and then got all the pots there so now they're just waiting there for us to put the I don't I guess I'll put mostly flowers in them maybe a few vegetables but probably be mostly flowers it's going to be really pretty though. I'm excited about it. This is where we planted some little lettuce and some um, spinach and it's coming on. Kind of looks sparse, but it is, you know, it is growing. So maybe in another week or so, we'll be able to harvest some of it and eat it. Of course, you could eat it when it's small like that, too. So our onions, you're really coming up now. You can really see them. Won't be but another week or so. We could go ahead and eat them now if we wanted to. I have planted some more on down, like a succession planting on down. And then the radishes right behind them. And then finally, some of my beets are coming up. And then the carrots are still growing, too. So our cabbage, all that rain, and even the cool weather has really helped it. It's really coming on good. We still need to cover it. We've still not got that part done, but at least it's all growing. These are the most recent things I've planted, and none of them are really coming up yet. But hopefully this sunshine we're having this week, they'll, they'll come on up. It's a row of onions, a row of beets, and a row of radishes. Two, two beets and one radish. Oh, Corey, what happened to yours? I don't know. It was like this. You're just eating it like that? Mm hmm Corey's got coconut outshine, and Katie and I have got strawberry. There's a real strawberry mine. I've been eating it. It's like chewy. Mm. Mine too. Good. Not as good as the fresh strawberries mm -mm. this year's. We don't. Uh, produce enough to grow to actually enjoy very many of them ourselves but we try to buy some where's the ones we buy from from florida florida yeah i think so mm. last year we got though the best ones we got were from um uh, clayton georgia somewhere no mm -hmm. not clayton um uh, 
Ja. Mm -hmm. I can't remember, but just over the mountain from us, so it wasn't far. They were so those good. Were good. Yeah, so good. So hopefully they'll have those again this year. Mm. This mm, is like shame. Eating a pop seal, the wind's blowing, I'm cold. I'm getting cold. This is like um straw or a I'm saying strawberry because I'm thinking about strawberries. This is like a popsicle corn on the cob for me because mm -hmm. I'm eating it sideways like this. Mm. Corey and I got a lot done. We got the grass do. mowed and weed eated. That was a major chore. And I'm really excited about the front of the greenhouse and the little area by the steps. And then we got one more bed in front of one of the beds, put the iris plugs in and a few hostas. You guys did get a lot done. Katie was in the basement getting a lot of done, in her dungeon, she calls it. Trying to, yeah. Uh, Cleaning them, organizing, making your orders. But we enticed her with a popsicle. We said, we're going to go have a popsicle. You want to come? Now your daddy will be mad that we had one without him. He will be, he'll be like, what? He'll be like, oh man. Sorry, Dad. He's not really mad. He just likes to No, he just likes to, yeah. He just likes to go on. He seems very somber sometimes on camera. That's the farthest from the truth. That's so not true. Anybody that knows him knows he's just a big ham and goes on all the time and cuts up. And That's who I get it from. Teases. and. That's who I get it from. Mm -hmm. He's joked with us until we were yeah. a little bitty. Aggravating you and making light of you and mm -hmm. in a fun way, not in a mean way. He doesn't have a mean bone in his body. No. He's all barking, no bite. <laughs> Hope he doesn't see this. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I have to say the same thing about myself, though. He's very kind, but he does like to tease and go on a lot. Mm -hmm. He does. For me, this is a better way to eat this popsicle. I can pretty much just swallow it whole and not have to bite it off because it hurts my teeth too bad. It's too cold. Corey has sensitive teeth. Sometimes it hurts my teeth. She's too. done everything to try. The dentist has worked with her. And well, and he's a good dentist. He just kind of said, you just got to manage it. Yeah. It ain't his fault. It ain't a fault thing. It ain't mm -hmm. nobody's fault. Some people are just like that. I've had a touch of that sometimes over my life, but then it kind of gets better and goes away. It kind of, sometimes it lessens up, but I think it's because I grip my teeth so bad at night mm -hmm. and I wear a bite guard, but I think that's still. Corey and Katie both grip their teeth. Only we time both I can, cracked a tooth doing Yeah, that. gritting them. The only time I can ever remember gritting my teeth was in when I was in high school and we had driver's ed and I was really nervous, <laughs> really nervous. Uh, the teacher was great, but he was a like an old, older guy that was he, he'd retired and then come back to teach driver's ed and he was very grouchy. If you went through Murphy High School when I was there in the 80s, you, you remember who he was. I think he was a really good man. Um, and all that, but he was really had just notorious for being like curt and you know, whatever. Anyway, and during that time, I was I had braces and I was gritting my teeth. And Pap worked at uh, at that time, girls. Pap worked for Duncan Oil Company, driving an oil truck and a gas truck sometimes. But um, the dentist, my orthodontist, was right there beside where he the plant, like the home base of Duncan's, where Pap would be. So he would come often, if I had an appointment, he'd come pick me up, this is before I could drive, and take me. And then when I was done, I would just walk back and wait until he could take me back to high school or somebody could, sometimes somebody else would. Anyway, but one of his, the ladies that worked in the secretary there, when I told her that I was, ner I was having driver's ed and I was really, really nervous, she said she understood she'd had the same gentleman too. But uh, she said, I'll tell you a little secret and you won't have no problem. I was like, okay, which I paid attention and did good on my test. We had, in those days, you had six weeks of driver's ed. Y'all did not. So we had six weeks. I whole, drove for 30 minutes and they give me a license. I know, we had six weeks of tests and every day learning and then you got to drive. Anyway, she said, I'll tell you a little secret. And I said, okay, what? And she said, tell him that you go to church. And I said, what? And she said, talk about church. And I said, well, we're having revival. And she said, okay, talk about church. So I somehow mentioned as shy as I was that we were having revival that week. And then after that, he, he was really kind to me. 
which that's not uh, he shouldn't have been like that i'm not saying that well, but, but you had common ground you found yeah. maybe some common ground something to talk yeah. about something he was interested yeah. in but i did see him do some very kind things one time i was just right first you observed did y'all get to observe or did you just drive observe what somebody else driving no i got Corey observed me and i observed her <laughs> while we were so no not really did you you mean another student or no. yeah well, I mean, I drove I drove twice. Once was with Katie was the last time. The first time was uh, with a young boy, and I did observe him, but he scared me. I thought he <laughs> was going like, to absolutely is... wreck us. And then the teacher pulled over in a church parking lot because he had to make a phone call, and he walked off from the car and left us sitting there. Oh, I put the driver's head car in a ditch. Yeah, that was when we were <laughs> together. And you still got... You <laughs> they still passed me. I well, drove that thing right into a culvert. The school bus was was riding our tail, and he the the coach just said, just pull on over right here, and there wasn't much place to pull over, and Katie took it right into the ditch. <laughs> oh, then he made us get out so he could He said, both of you, get out of the car. He was nice. Well, to be 100% fair, like I'd never been on that road, like, ever. I sound stupid that I've lived here my whole life, but there was just one road I hadn't been on, and it was well, that one. There's lots of roads here. I ain't been Creek. in. And yeah, and I was yeah. like, and I hadn't been back since. So, you're saying that you gritted your teeth when you had... Um, anyway, yes, I gritted my teeth, but I will say what I was going to say to take up for him. When I was observing one day, you know the street between the police station in Murphy and the power board there? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a narrow Whoever one. was driving had to go up that. And there was a little old lady walking across, and he stopped. He said, "Stop! Stop the car! Everyone, stay exactly where they're at. Put the car in park." And he got out and helped her all the Aww. way across, and helped her get in her car. So That's that was very nice. nice. Yeah. Anyway, but yes, I gritted my teeth, and my whole face was so sore. Mm -hmm. But it was stress. It was only because I was so nervous about driver's ed. And once I was out of that, I quit doing it. But Corey and Katie do it every night. <laughs> I think it's a habit, and then it's hard to. You can't be aware of it because you're sleeping, but I'll notice it after 8 p.m., like last night, if I'm even just sitting on the couch, I'm not asleep yet. I'm awake. I'm watching TV. My teeth, I, I can feel myself starting to clench starting and to starting clench. to try to grit, and I have to tell myself, no, yeah. don't do that. You're not asleep I do yet. That. That's why I have three I have three bite guards. One that I cracked and <laughs> broke through, and two back, one and one new one, and then a backup. If, if we could only harness the power of Katie's jaws, the pressure. I know, and I've been doing it. Like this morning, I woke up and I was like, "Oh man, my teeth hurt real bad, and they do. They hurt, and your yeah, face hurts, and your jaws." I, the, I put the last little bit of the popsicle I had in my mouth. The video will be able to see it. You didn't see it, and it, I, it was hurting my teeth. The answer is my teeth are like yours too, but I just somehow. Just ignore it and keep ignore going. Ignore and keep eating. Just keep hurting, I guess. That's kind of... Yeah. Mine get like that too, but it's my back teeth that are worse probably than my front yeah. teeth. But Oh well, what am I going to do about it? Look at the crusted dirt on there. Yeah. So both dirty. Can't work outside without getting dirty. Got to have old clothes. Oh, and if you notice, we were going to tell that story. If you notice, me and Corey changed clothes at some point. Oh, yeah. Pants and clothes. Corey got too hot. I got too hot, and I brought clothes with me to yeah. change into because it was cooler this morning, and I knew it was going to warm yeah. up. And I actually busted the seat out of my pants, so I had to change. <laughs> <laughs> Mama was like, if I bend over, can you see the hole in my pants? I said, yeah, yeah I, can I, I can see the hole in your pants. You need to get That's rid of That's like my favorite pair of pants to work outside in, and I knew the holes get Getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I bought those like at a thrift shop, like in Asheville, ten years ago or wow. something. You got your. But they were just comfortable to work <laughs> outside in. Just to, and somebody had hemmed them. Somebody had cut them off and hemmed them not very well, but it didn't matter because I knew when I bought them, I thought those would be great outdoor pants. So yeah, I probably paid what three dollars for them, Probably. four dollars, five dollars, and I've wore them for literal years. But you got your use out of them. I like Sadly, these pants. Sadly, I'm going to have to put them in. <laughs> <laughs> that scared me. Don't laugh at me. I was scared. I'm going to have to put them in the rag bag. That is my brother Steve shooting. Scared. He has a, a shooting range right there. We just didn't realize no. he was going to shoot. Wasn't that, that bad? I mean, it, it didn't scare, scare me, me but it scared me too. But scared Corey. That was kind of a delayed reaction. Well, I, I did say it. woo, so I guess it did scare me. Woo. I jumped, but I didn't do it. Corey did. Corey about fell out of her seat. <laughs> <laughs> fell off my bucket. I'm sitting yeah. on him. I didn't know. I should have known. I heard him down there. He'll shoot again too here in a minute. Yeah, you'll hear it again in a minute. That's probably his smoke wagon. That's what it sounded like. It's a pistol. What's well, a smoke wagon? <laughs> it's this pistol he's oh, got. It's a pistol. All right. Well. We better go in and I gotta cook supper. Corey's gotta head home. 
Katie's got work to do. Yep, always work to do. But I'm going to end this video right now. i got to go inside the house. I feel very accomplished with it. I mean, very good about everything we accomplished today, though. Me too. Yeah. I think it yeah. looks great. I'm proud of y'all. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Say bye, Mom. Bye. 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 <laughs>